I see two nerds that are ready for a best of nine. And hopefully, guys, it's going to be a best of nine for the ages. We've got the great Iona Sutala versus the man who has done the impossible. They said it was impossible. Protoss making it to the grand finals of a big international event since when? Solar couldn't do it. Dark couldn't do it. Raynor couldn't do it. But I think I know a guy who can do it. I'm ready, guys. Right Feels like the music is very loud. Let's get it on. Serol versus Hero. A best of nine. To close out three weeks of absolutely non-stop action over here in the Masters Coliseum. In the top right side of Equilibrium. To kick things off, we are looking at the main base of Basilisk Serol. And in the top left side, we are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is Hero. I'm trying to figure out my balance, guys. Thank you to Therese and Pimerac for 45 and 25 months, respectively. Let's do it. Some of you guys were concerned. I am a little bit concerned. I'm not concerned about Jonas' chances. But Hero is turning me into more and more of a believer every single time I see him. This tournament has been fantastic, guys. I know a lot of people say, StarCraft this, meta that. Honestly, I feel like if you've watched Masters Coliseum with me, or on Wadi's channel, or on Steadfast, or Cranky Ducklings, or Harstam. How can you possibly watch this entire tournament and say, Yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. That's wild. We've had a few one-sided days in the playoffs, like one, uh, two in a row. But other than that, I think the Swiss format was sick. Yesterday was sick. Uh, it's been a banger. What about that game seven between Dark and Maru? That was pretty sick too. Where is the bet? The prediction, I think, is still open. Or maybe it has just expired, but it's there. We have a 15 minute prediction running where you guys can put all your imaginary internet channel points on the line. Zero mm. mm. is indeed on an absolute monster streak in these playoffs. He started off his playoff journey with a 3-0 victory over Solar, the man who has hurt him in the past. He followed that up with a 3-0 victory over Maru, a player who beat him in the group stage. And then in the upper bracket final, he went 4-0 against Raynor. Here on Equilibrium, a very good Zerg map, which gives us the idea that Saro obviously has first map choice. We see that Hero has gone for a one gas opening and a proxy pylon. And he's actually just going to go for some old school gate pressure. Press F5 pitch. If you press F5, you guys should still be able to get your predictions in. I think it's still open. But there's also a chance that it has now run out. You guys had 15 minutes. That's a long time. If you can do it within 15 minutes, then it's obviously over. What service is the tournament played on? We have that speech every single day, so I have it one time. The way that they always do it in WTL and Masters Coliseum is Game 1 is on West, as in a California server. Game 2 is on Central. Game 3 is on West. Game 4 is on Central. Game 5 is on West. Game 6 is on Central. Game 7 is West. Game 8 is Central. And if we get all the way to Game, to the, uh, game 9, it will be on West. So Hero will have one more game, theoretically, where he has a server advantage. But the server advantage that Cero has on Central is a bit bigger than what Koreans have on West. So many games. Well, let's hope we get so many games. The first game could be short and sweet, guys, as Hero is going to go for... Honestly, I call this an Australia build. There was a long time ago that Australia was just another American Protoss who snuck into WCS Premier League. And he did this kind of stuff quite often against the likes of Scarlet and Shem. He found success with it. It is incredibly high risk, high reward. I don't think Sarah has really scouted it yet. But, you know, in the end of the day, all you need is really Queens and Links to deal with this stuff. A spine crawler could get useful as well. But Queens and Links are fine. There's only one world where Sarah is in a lot of trouble, and that is if he has no units. But Sarah has actually already built a lot of units. And he's going to find it in an absolutely picture-perfect moment right before Warp Gate is done. Here are the Zerglings of Cero. And game one is just a straight-up disaster for Hero. That warp in I don't think is going to finish up ever. So the warp in gets cancelled. The gateway gets unpowered. We can't reinforce anymore. And now we've got a three-gate opening without a Twilight Council, without a Stargate, without a Robo. That just can't do anything. It's a nightmare start. An absolute nightmare start for Hero, guys. This is close to being a game over. Unfortunately. 
Hero thought of, excuse me, Sarah thought of building a roach farm there. And he's like, yeah, you know what? We'll make a Danelings, baby. I already have Zergling speed. I have to cover a large distance. My main is very far away from the gold. Hero, by the way, was incredibly supply blocked after losing that pylon. That's obviously not going to help either. I love the call of the Baneling Nest here. I absolutely love the call of the Baneling Nest. It is not a best of seven, it's a best of nine. The Banelings are going to be sick here. Like, Adepts without Blade, Zealots without Charge, Stalkers without Blink, Ling, Bane, Queen is going to be sick. Hero is going to try to take his own Mega Base, but yeah, good luck, have fun getting that off. There's just no way. If Hero wins this first game, then we are in for a truly epic Grand Finals. Because then he will show us that he can win any game. Some of you guys might say like, is it really that bad? Doesn't Hero have a 7 work elite? He's got a 7 work elite, but he's got no tech at all. Now the Lynx probably should have gone for that Nexus there. Now I don't know if they can still do it, because the Adept count is quite high, but Sero says, oh, I can absolutely do it. I don't give a damn about a couple of Adepts without resonating glaives. So he's going to cancel that Nexus, he's going to pick up the probe as well. And yeah, it's a rough start for the man from Dragon Kaiser Gaming. Now this is a very crappy map for Protoss. So if you are a hero fan or you're just cheering for the player that a lot of people would consider to be the underdog. Maybe some of you guys don't like that statement. Be like, Roddy, how can you call him the underdog? He beat Solar, Dark and Rainer. Well, yeah, he did. But none of those guys are Sero. <laughs> Obviously, I hope all of you guys will enjoy the Grand Finals and you guys are allowed to, in general, talk about whatever the hell you want in chat, but no balance whining, guys. I'm really... I've said it many times, I'm sick and tired of balance whining. Cheer for your favorite player, cheer for Hero, cheer for Serral, cheer for great games, but balance whining will result in timeouts or bans, because I cannot be bothered. I have not sit here and casted solid 90 or 100 hours of Masters Colosseum. To see all of the accomplishments of the players come down to balance. We have Links and Banes crashing into some adepts. There is one shield battery, but that shield battery cannot get overcharged yet because you can only use battery overcharge if the Nexus is done. I gotta say though, Hero now up to 55 workers. And he's got the Mega Base, and he's got access to Blink. Maybe? I'd be lying if I said I love the game for him. I absolutely do not love the game yet. But Sarah does need to be cautious. That was a good hold. And Double Forge is going to be the name of the game here as well. Of course, Sarah has that mega base fully saturated. It's not just the gold, it also has a rich Vespian geyser. And he's going to work on plus one melee. Plus one melee zerglings are excellent against stalkers with blink. And Sarah is obviously not the man to make too many macro errors. Shout out to Spider, I appreciate it matey. And my man Andre with the 27 months. Nice to see you Andre, a legend. Zero has an overseer scout in the main. He is going to see the setup, he should know everything that is happening over here. And I think just pure Ling Bane a Ravager is perfectly fine here. I think once Zero feels safe, he's gonna drop an infestation pit and we can just go all the way up to Hive. We can get Adreno Glands. But Sarah obviously does not want to make that mistake that of doing it too early and potentially dying to something he should not die to. Charge Lots is indeed going to be the follow-up, but Sarah has an answer for that, right? We've got Roaches out, we've got Links, we've got Bane Links, we've got Bane Links speed done. Hero is now going to try to make some magic happen with the multitasking. Sarah is actually temporarily supply blocked, but I'm just afraid that this army is not necessarily good enough, Hero. So he's got that War Prism in the main, guys. The, the gameplay here is obviously try to buy some time, try to get a bit of a trade with this army, and then do some damage with Zealots in the main base. But this army is just not good enough in this phase in the game to really get a great fight here. The Zealots in the main, however, are here in pretty large numbers. And they are going to be able to at least grab a few queens, so... The Stalker Sentry move out a disaster, the War Prism in the main, pretty good. More queens are dying. What I have noticed, by the way, is that Hero is always just able to warp in so many freaking Zealots. He rarely sends in a War Prism, he never took that gas, by the way, but he doesn't need it yet. It's never a Prism in the main, oh, four Zealots, let's see what they can do, no. You blink and it's like 12 Zealots, 14 Zealots. 
But it does not change the fact that his move out got absolutely smacked down. And all the sentries died. He does have insanely good upgrades again. As we are used to. Hero is gaming. And we are just kind of waiting and seeing if he can potentially get a good fight somewhere. It is going to be very hard, especially once Hive is done, but... I'm already happy with what we get to see here in the first 10 minutes of Equilibrium. It is important that Hero doesn't fall too far behind in the army supply, right? Like we're losing a few more Zealots here, a few more Zealots there. Maybe the idea is just to keep Sero at home. But we are down a solid 40-50 army supply. But we're going to get some Archons and the Immortals have very good upgrades already. We don't have a Robo Bay. I wonder if we can find the resources to get one. Maybe Hero just feels that that's going to take a little bit too long. And if we're playing Double Forge, it's all about the Gateways, the Immortals and the Archons. And that's obviously fair. The APM thing is bugged, guys. Uh, it's been bugged for a long time, so I wouldn't focus too much on the actual APM. We know that both these guys are very fast. That is not the move, though. Hero, two Immortals in the absolute middle of nowhere. And he loses the War Prism. So just when you start getting a tiny bit of hope that maybe Hero can turn this into a game because he's got sexy upgrades, disaster strikes. And if you give a present to Yona Satala, he's going to unwrap it immediately. I'm going to take full advantage of it. Two Immortals and a Prism. Thank you very much, sir. And now the best thing, obviously, for Saro is that he can just full focus on everything that's happening over here. Does not need to worry about Zealots at home anymore. He's going to crash into all of these Stalkers. Now, the upgrades are definitely doing their thing. The Stalkers are trading to the best of their ability. There is a battery in the top side of our screen. Saro is losing a decent amount of units here. These Bainics kind of need to connect with something big as we're going to land an Abduct on that Immortal. So another Immortal is going to fall. Saro is forced to temporarily retreat. Drops a couple of Cursor Balls. Please don't chase out too far, Hero. Oh my goodness, the forward blink is so crazy. Imagine if those links were there immediately to get the wraparound. Because these are now plus two melee Zerglings with Adrenal Glands. There's still no battery there yet, so he's going to force another defensive uh, blink. One of the Archons is close to finishing up, but not quite. I mean, after that side Delta game, I think we all agree that we will just never look at this supply again and be like, yeah, Hero is probably dead, right? <laughs> at one point, Hero was down 80 supply in game 7 against uh, Reynor, and he hung in there. A little bit later, he was down all the way to 60-something supply, while Reynor was way over 100. And a couple of well-upgraded stalkers and cannons just kept him alive forever. It does not seem like it's going to happen this time, but... Hey. <laughs> oh, the doors are open. And if links run in, that could become very painful. Hero does do an excellent job in moving his army into the right spot. But that also means that the gold is going to be very exposed. I don't think Rico is really an option here. We're going to use battery overcharge, but... That battery is going to fall very quickly. There is a Viper in the mix. The Bane Link count is high. Sarah is going to split off Bane Links into different bases. And says, alrighty, let's go ahead and grab 15 workers. Still though, <laughs> like, game one is going to go in favor of uh, Sarah. I'm very confident in saying that. 13 minutes in with a disaster start and on a very bad map. This is giving me some hope for Hero for the entire series. Mm. As the Stalkers and Archons are going to try to do their thing, but the Roach Ravager count is still pretty high, so it's going to get on top of these Archons immediately. The War Prism shows up a little bit too late to save that Immortal. Hero is down to four bases now, still has 65 probes, which is the amount that normally allows you to dream. But obviously, with all of the action taking place on Hero's side of the map, Seros is able to do his thing, has taken the entire right side of the map. Seems like we're going to go for a good old Zergling Flood into the main. Five Drop Lords at once. Sarah is going to storm that Protoss base like it's Normandy, baby. Might get the Forges, by the way. Plus three melee links. Well, not quite plus three yet, but we're close. Hero is actually somewhat nearby with his Stalkers, but Stalkers alone are going to have a hard time. Minus ten probes and a couple of uh, pylons and... Stalkers will die, and at the same time, Sarah is going to try to see if there is an opening in the bottom side of the map. Hero is such a survivor, man. Unless a Prototh would have rolled over and died. 
five times already. And this man just always seems to find some money for Stalkers, some money for Archons, some money for Immortals. Sarah is maxed out, and obviously since Hero is nowhere near maxed out, you would kind of say that there is no better moment right now for Sarah to fight than this. Every second that goes by, Hero could get more Archons, could get more Immortals. And I don't think that is necessarily going to uh, get the job done, because obviously Sarah is catching up in upgrades, and he does have plus 3 now. But yeah, 3-3 three, three Stalkers, Archons, Immortals, they pack a punch, and especially backed up by cannons and batteries, it is very hard for Zerg to end the game. Wait, is Hero doing it? I think it is way too early to talk about that, mate. Sarah sitting on 4,500 minerals. Doesn't have a crazy amount of gas, but what he does have is better circlings, better banelings. And still has a bunch of roaches and ravages. As the banelings are going to blow up that overcharged battery. The probes are kind of stucky. And five probes do end up dying. Hero again loses the immortals. More lings are going to run on top of the mega base as well. I mean, I do think that Sero right now is getting the message that this is not going to be an easy and straightforward best of nine. And then he's going to have to battle incredibly hard for every game. Because this was a really good start, I think, by Sero. Sure, Sero didn't have the best economy with all the links that he made, but shutting the three gate down the way that he did should have been absolutely cooking. And he still is kind of cooking, but... Hero came to play today. And that is... Obviously what we all hoped for, and what we expected perhaps as well. <coughs> there was a time that everybody looked at the ZVP and said the Zerg is pretty favored. A couple of the changes that went through in the previous patch may not have had the impact in TVP that some of the neutral nerds out there were hoping for. But almost every pro out there, and even the pro uh, pros will tell you, that it's actually pretty nice to play against Zerg right now as Protoss. That doesn't mean that it's imbalanced. But the day and age where you go up against a Zerg and it just feels like you can't really let it get to X, Y, Z or you're absolutely not going to win. Doesn't really feel like that's the case. There are multiple viable Protoss openings, multiple good styles to play. Hero's army right now is a lot bigger than it's been in a long time. Fighting on Creepy is going to be hard though, and obviously Saro is going to show up with a ridiculous amount of Banelings because he's been so rich. Also has a Great Aspire. Saro does need to be careful because he's been spending a crazy amount of gas on all these Banelings, so these are the kind of fights that do absolutely need to go well. But it is hard to imagine that this many Banelings won't at least kill half this Protoss army, maybe even a little bit more than half of it. As Hero does keep a couple of Archons alive, Saro is going to remax on 88 links. And still 5 Archons in the mix. That was a lot of Banelings, guys. That was a lot of Banelings. 134 Banes have already fallen in an 18-minute game on Equilibrium. Zero's got the Great Aspire, but he has not put it to use yet. Maybe he just feels that if he goes into Brute Lords right now, his army is going to be a bit too slow, a bit too immobile. And he doesn't want to see Hero do his thing and run around with Zealots and Stalkers. What a sick game. Hero just refuses to die. Nine more probes will fall. More links, more roaches, more ravages. And I'm afraid that five Archons here is not going to be good enough. Hero does have a tiny bit of money in the bank. Has a War Prism on the other side of the map. Unfortunately, those Stalkers on the top side of your screen are in a lot of trouble. As plus three melee links don't mess around. If they can just fight Stalkers without any storms or batteries or Archons to worry about, they are going to do that thing. 36 workers fall again. Hero supply is in the gutter. That's not going to stop him from warping in five more zealots in the main. Hero is such a warrior, eh? Maybe Hero is playing the endurance game, guys. Zoro lost his bailing nest, so he's gonna have to rebuild his bailing nest. Now, obviously, at this point, Hero's economy is gone. It was a split moment there. It was at 180 supply, and he was going up to five bases, and you're like, well. Maybe this will go on for another five minutes. To be honest, it's already gone on for eight minutes longer than I thought it would. But with 54 supply, I have a hard time believing that even Hero, with his well upgraded Archons and Immortals and Zealots, is gonna get the job done here. Plus three links, do not mess around. And this is, uh, I think, going to do it. GG gets called. Serral takes the 1 0 lead. But hey, that took 19 minutes and 30 seconds.
and Hero went for a 3 gate pressure opening that got scouted at an awful moment for Hero because his gateway got unpowered, he couldn't warp in, he lost another adept, he got supply blocked because of it. So it was like worst case scenario and he made it one hell of a game. If you're a Protoss fan, are you cheering for Hero? I honestly don't think that game is a game to feel too bad about. The only thing that you can feel a little crappy about is that most likely that game was played on US West. And that is obviously the server that favors Hero. Game 2 will be on US Central. And that's going to be a better server for Sarah. Hmm. This series has me hyped. Happy to hear that, mate. Alright, so Rough Rough did not get the message. That is uh, 10 minutes into the corner, mate. And the next time it is 100 minutes. Storm would have been sick, but I don't know if he ever felt that he had the time for it. Does Hero go to Poland? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, are we going to see him in Poland? And last year he made it to the semi-finals of IEM Katowice. And he got stopped by the normal man. Never attacked higher than a Roach. Yeah, you're right, guys. Uh, Vipers are now accessible on Hatchery Tech. So that is also a 10 minute timeout for Game Jinx. Vipers are now Hatchery Tech. Great Aspire is now Hatchery Tech. Corruptors are now Hatchery Tech. We're doing good, guys. Plus, uh, plus three is uh, available on Hatchery Tech and Adreno Glance as well. We saw Corruptor shutting down a prison. We saw Vipers abducting Archon after Immortal, after Archon, after Immortal. <laughs> Drones, definitely high tech. I think a lot of Zergs would be very happy if they could build Corruptors of uh, Hatchery Tech. That would make their life a lot easier, eh? <laughs> Alright, here we go, round two. Round two, fight! Bottom right side, we took a look at the main base of the man who's taking the 1-0 lead. That was Basilisk Serol from Finland. Still undefeated, by the way, in the playoffs. Can I get an 11-0 in the chat? In the top left side, the man who defeated Solar, Dark and Rainer in a row in the playoffs to make it to the grand finals. Down 0-1, but he showed us that he's here to fight today. It is Dragon Kaizi Gaming's hero. If they put Disruptor on Gateway, I'm okay with it. I would honestly prefer Colossus. If I could come up with something that is incredibly broken and imbalanced, I would honestly go for a gateway uh, for a Colossus. Disruptors be fun, but I would much rather have the ability to warp in a bunch of Colossus, mate. <laughs> Any idea what that match history is? Thanks for the comment. I have actually not checked it yet, mate. Uh, I can take a look at my phone because I don't want to all tap. So yeah. I don't think they play against each other all the time, because as you guys know, Saro is not much of an online grinder, you know. The man has done it all, he has won it all, and Saro is not too interested in the minor online events. Hero does play a lot of minor online events, EPT weeklies, uh, Wadi tournaments, you name it, he will probably play the KSL. Saro doesn't really play those events, so they don't run into each other very often. But of course they will have a bit of history, and I'll take a look at it for you, mate. In all the years that these two have been good video gamers, they have actually only played seven series against each other. Sarah has won five out of seven. The last time they played against each other was at Gamers 8 in Saudi Arabia last summer. Sarah won that one two to one. So that was a best of three. Before that, they had an online win. They also played against each other in IEM Katowice 2023, where Sarah did win 2-0. Uh, but in the end, Hero had a better performance in that tournament because he made it to the semi-finals and Saro only made it to the quarter-finals. And then uh, one time in the Wadi TV Christmas Special 2022. So yeah, seven times in total, five wins for Saro, two wins for Hero. And the two wins of Hero were all the way back in 2022. There you have it. Hero has gone for his uh, wall off. Solar tried to Baneling bust it on side Delta. It did not go well. 
and it felt like it was bait. And Raynor asked about the games, and he's like, yeah, the wall of his bait, never bailing busted. He wants you to bailing bust it. He's going to scout it, and he's going to get ready for it. <laughs> void Ray first for Hero. Some of you guys in the chat are very passionate about the Void Ray first. Some of you hate it, some of you love it. I am not a lover of the Void Ray first, but I am a lover of Hero. So I'm curious to see where he's going to go with it. That is uh, the first adapt getting two drones, by the way. That is not bad at all, as I was still taking a look at one or two of those uh, Liquipedia results. So two drones and a bit of lost mining time. That is not shabby. It is now almost a shame that he went for a Void Ray over an Oracle. Because if you would have gone Oracle first, it would have been out quicker. And most of the time, if your first adapt is successful, then it's a lot more likely that your first Oracle is successful. Because the Zerg is still recovering from the damage they took from that adapt. Hero is going to go up to three bases, uh, four minutes and a couple of seconds into the game as the first Void is going to go to the other side of the map. We know that Hero has a lot of follow-ups in his arsenal, where he will just go up to eight gateways, Zealots with plus one. Plus one is incredibly important there, because with plus one, Zealots kill Zerglings with two hits instead of three. And that makes a very big difference. As we now have a Void Ray and an Oracle just diving into the main, but the second Queen has popped. So what could have been amazing for Hero is, well, not going to be a disaster. Gets a Queen, but obviously takes a lot of damage. Let's see if the two Adepts can find something. I like the timing of the Shade there. The target fire on the drones is decent. We're going to let this Shade finish up. I don't like that he split up the Adepts. I feel like Adepts are always better if you keep them right next to each other. Maybe, can we get lucky and get one more drone? Does not seem like it. So, five drones have died and one queen has died. Whoa, okay. Old school. That was a day and age that it was very common, very standard for Protoss players to get double robo at the third. I always think back of the Neep days and the Showtime days when I was casting WCS Premier League. And I'm terrible in remembering map names, but... We had a icy map once, where it was like top left, bottom right. I'm not talking about King Sejong. And then there was kind of like a little path through the middle. And then you would go up, and that's where most of the time the third would be immediately. And I saw so many Protoss games of Showtime and Neve, where they always had the double robo there. And then it was a battle between force fields and roaches, ravages, links. Don't see it super often these days, the double robo at the third, but don't hate it. So Hero does have his Zealots here, and they're going to show up before charge is even done. If all of these Zealots start working on the hatchery, by the way, that hatchery is going to take a lot of damage, and it could get difficult for Serral to keep it alive. I don't think he can keep it alive. What a timing here by Hero, guys. I mean, no, you have to cancel it, Serral. So Serral is forced to cancel the fourth base, and that's big. A lot of great Protoss builds often come down to either delaying the fourth or canceling the fourth, and Hero just did that. That's actually a very big moment there, guys. Follow-up of Saro is going to be a Spire. Now, I do hope that Hero is eventually going to scout that. Because if we open up Zello Charge Double Robo, we don't have the best end here. But I'm sure that this is not Hero's first rodeo. And I'm sure that he's already thinking about a Spire and potentially is worried about it. Mudos are indeed a great choice. Unless Hero picks up on it in time. And then we can get ready for it. Don't forget that he has a Stargate. You can build Phoenix. I do have legit PTSD from watching that game on Grass 1 between Hero and Dark at Game S8. Actually one of the most painful games that I've ever seen. More painful than the Babylon loss he had back then. Where Dark was spamming pure Muda Ling. And Hero had the double Stargate. Phoenix plus two air weapons and any of crystals. But the way that Hero groups his units, he does not really always have a group to micro the Phoenix properly. And Phoenix are amazing against Miras, but they are not good if you don't group them and you don't micro them the way you should. And he kind of basically uses Hotkey 1 and Hotkey 2, and most of the time that comes down to his Stalkers, his Archons, uh, a War Prism. And then sometimes he groups the Phoenix and sometimes he doesn't. 
And that obviously makes it kind of difficult to deal with Mutalisk. Now, Revelation has gone down. I don't know if he caught a glimpse of these Mutas. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if Hero just says, yeah, F it. I know Phoenix are good. But if I can't use them properly, I'd rather defend with Stalkers and Archons. Because I'm freaking amazing with them. The problem is that the Temple Archives is only halfway done. Hero is down 8 workers and I think he's about to be down a whole lot more as we were not ready guys for the first wave of Miras. He does have Immortals, he does have Zealots, uh, Stalkers have Blink, but what did he cancel there? Was that the Temple Archives? I think it was, right? Kinda feels like a crazy cancel, but maybe he just feels that he needs money for more Stalkers. Needs money for a couple of Phoenixes. The Mutas in the bottom right side in the picture in picture are doing their thing in the main. 15 probes have died. Cero has taken a 60 supply lead. Couple of Stalkers with Blink and that one Phoenix will get on top of the Mutas. And it seems that Cero is kind of okay with just moving on from the Phoenix, uh, from the Muta phase. Fires up the Hive, has a lot of links, Roaches plus two melee on the way. And Hero is now going to rebuild the Templar Archives that he cancelled earlier. I want to say I think this fire was successful. I think the Middleists were successful. I think Cyril is more than happy with it. Now it's going to look a little more like Equilibrium again. Immortal Count is getting proper high. So if the links do not get a proper wraparound, or if there are cannons and battery overcharge nearby, these immortals can truly live up to their name and become immortals. Overlord Speed is going to finish up, the Bane links are here, Hero needs a good hold here to still stay in this game, and I want to say it started off promising, but the Bane link count is so freaking high, and they are starting to just blow up these Immortals, they're going to make their way into the middle line as well, and that is minus 14 probes again, and Cero could click on this Nexus, and he is going to click on this Nexus, and he's going to grab that Nexus, so Hero is now a 3 base Protoss, with 56 workers. That one Phoenix is gonna put its energy to good use and lift up a, a Ravager, but... An expensive attack by Cero, but I think an attack that he can absolutely justify. Cero is a 6 base Zerg. It's okay to throw away units. If you reset the army a little bit, you blow up the static defenses, you blow up probes, you get a base. Yeah. How can we say that that was not good for Cero? I think Lynx are looking for a, ca a cancel here, by the way, and just a cancel would be big, and it is a cancel. Sarrow's on point so far, guys. Sarrow is absolutely on point. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Lino. I don't think it's going to be over in 30 minutes. But I do think we are going to look at a 2-0 lead for Sarrow in the near future. Now, an equilibrium hero showed us that even if things don't really go his way, he can hang in there like a fucking warrior. And he can make sure that these games can go on for a very long time. But on Equilibrium, he had a slightly better probe count, at least, for the majority of the game. He may not have had the dream army that we really believed in, or the map control and the map presence. What he did have was a very good probe count. That is now almost the case, but not totally. I like the idea of Sarah going into uh, quick Brute Lords. The Brutes definitely got nerfed. So a little while ago, for the people who don't watch Starcraft 2 all the time, we had a patch where Brute Lords no longer deal the devastating amount of damage. I think Brute Links last a little bit uh, shorter as well and perhaps deal less damage. Uh, what they did get is way better movement speed. So instead of it being this awfully pain and slow moving unit, they're actually kind of quick right now. They just deal less damage. But of course, they're still amazing against armies that are simply not meant to deal with them. Do we know the upgrades? Yeah. I mean, in the top left side, you guys can see that Hero is researching 3-3, three, three, which means that he's currently on 2-2. Two, two. Zele, uh, Saro has plus 2 melee. He has also broken the game, by the way. 203 supply. Hero is going to go for a tiny forward blink, snipes one or two of those brutes, but he is going to pay a bit of a price for it. Saro leaves a couple of units behind as well to keep tabs of that war prism. We now have Queens and Brutes. Wondering if there's an opening. Another forward blink by Hero. I think he's going to get punished for that. 
He will get most of the Brutal Lords here at first, but that's obviously a lot of stalkers that he's losing. And now the Immortals and the Archons could use a little bit of help as well as more Brutal Lords come in from the bottom right side. The Roaches and Ravages are doing their thing. I mean, good job by Heroes sniping a decent amount of the Brutal Lords so far. But it wasn't free. Now he loses one Immortal at the tail end of all of that. Maybe with 3 3, some of these fights would have gone a whole lot better. But we are not there yet. Sarah also has plus one flyer attacks now on these Brood Lords. That Observer, by the way, is pretty sweet for Hero. Gives him pretty good info on where those Brood Lords are about. Links, Roaches, Ravages, and Banelings are going to crash into the 9 o'clock base. I have no idea what that is about, mate. Distracted by a weird comment, but it's all good. Where are the viewers? There are many streams, by the way, guys. I am not the official stream of this tournament at all. I am just one of the guys that watches these games and people can watch them with me. But this is not the official broadcast of the Masters Coliseum. I believe that Statfest is covering the games. Wadi was covering a lot of it, but he's not here today because I think he's... Uh, competing in a Pokemon tournament. Awesome is obviously casting. You have all the national language casters. I am just one of the many streamers. As we have a couple of big storms landing over here from Hero. If you are a Hero, what units do you go here for? I think exactly what he's doing because those are the upgrades that he has, right? I kind of like what he's doing. I think that he's doing the right thing, but I do think that the game up to this point hasn't really gone his way. Uh, Broodlords indeed are not ultra impactful. Yeah, but Sero was waiting for a blink like that and that's when he's gonna pull the trigger and send forward all these links and banes. And he's gonna get the wraparound on that Frodo's army. Uh, I really love the Broodlord play so far here, guys. I'm still a bit of a Broodlord believer. Hero is gonna blink forward one more time. But these stalkers are just going to get surrounded by Broodlings and then they're gonna be forced to run away. I think the game was just uh, too good for uh, Sero up to this point. I don't think Hero built the wrong units given the situation that he was in. I just think too many things did not go his way up to this point. We have Lings and Banes crashing into the Stalkers and the Batteries. Hero is retreating deep into his triangle base but the floodgates are open. Sero takes the 2-0 lead and just looking mega clean as always. Must be nice. 12-0 and zero in the playoffs of the Masters Colosseum 7. If I was him, guys, I would take Starcraft 2 very serious and wonder where I can go with it, you know? Kind of keep your head down for a while, start practicing, participate in an event like I Am Katowice or whatever the Starcraft 2 World Championships may be this year, because I foresee a good future. Hmm. Game 3 is a very important one now, guys. Would Skytos be a decent choice versus this Zerg comp? So absolutely, uh, of course you can look at those Broodlords and be like, hey, shouldn't Hero have Tempest? I think there are moments where Tempests are absolutely fantastic against Broodlords. There are moments where Carriers would have been fantastic. It's just, you cannot just randomly decide to build a Fleet Beacon, a second Stargate, a third Stargate, expect Serro to sit back, let you get an answer for his army and then fight. Hero probably felt that the game up to that point simply did not go well enough for him to have that luxury, have the economy to drop a fleet beacon and get extra stargates. And if you play double forge and you have all those gates, yeah, then you're going to try to get the job done with stalkers and archons and storm. Different scenario, different early game, different mid game. There is a good chance that he slaps down that fleet beacon and a few more stargates. But those are choices you have to make in the heat of the moment. And Hero probably did not feel that he had the economy for that. Obviously, didn't have any air upgrades either. Goodbye, Luna. Two messages, mate, and you're out of here. Well done, mate. Does Sarah get up a bracket? A game advantage? No. He does not. It is just a best of nine. Not a best of five, not a best of seven. It is just a straight up best of nine. Next game, guys, incredibly important. 
it is going to be on the server that is better for hero and he's down 0-2 and it is on a rat who sent a station so this is pretty much a must win game in the top right side we are looking at the main base of the man who does play this map rather often in WTL code S because everyone picks it against him it is Basilisk Cero enjoying a 2-0 lead over this man the Protoss who had taken out Solar had taken out Dark and yesterday took out Raynor in an absolutely epic best of 7 Dragon Kaisi Gaming 0 Ratu set a must win game an incredibly good map for Protoss because of the in base a third base so basically you get three bases for absolutely free for zerg it is actually kind of annoying to go up to four and especially go up to five bases because the fifth base is going to be so far away from everything else i have spoken to some very good protoss players in europe and i'm like so what do you like so much about this map what makes it good and most of the time they just tell me that they like it because they can honestly do whatever the hell they want and still feel like they are going to win now, Serral does have incredibly freaking good late game. And where we saw Serral be pretty aggressive in game one and game two, I have the feeling that Serral is going to embrace his old school full turtle Zero here. And he's just going to say, all right, I know that attacking into you is probably not going to do it. So I'm going to sit back. I'm going to be the helmet, Zerg. And I'm going to try to have an answer for everything you throw at me for the first 20 minutes. Take a tiny look, guys, at how uh, tennis is going. Is our Italian boy still alive? Or is it over? Ooh, he's still alive. He's battling. He's battling. <laughs> WTL Observer with a misclick there. Don't worry, mate. That happens to me like five times a weekly. But forgive him for it. <laughs> Medvedev was up 2-0, but lost set 3, and it seems that game, uh, set 4... Whoa, that's a mega quick lair, guys. That is a mega quick lair. So, Zero is maybe not going to be the helmet Zerg. And he's like, you know what? I'll go full Bruce Wayne on you. <laughs> this could turn into a Queen Ling Nidus. That's the feeling that I have right now. Hero is not going to turn around, I think, with that adapt that he has in the center of the map. A super quick lair on the side of Serral. Only 19 drones, more links on the way, more queens on the production tab. Hero needs to scout this. And the moment he scouts this, I would say go full wall off. And make sure that you have vision of every... Go for... Check the drones, mate. Oh my god, he didn't check the drones, guys. He did not see there was not a single drone there. He shaded past the natural. And at this point, he may just think like, Oh, okay, it's weird that I don't see a third hatch. But I don't know if the... Maybe he saw all the links right now cleaning up. God, that's so many circlings. Okay, we do have a full wall off. That part is good. I expect Serral to drop a Nidus. There is your Nidus. 3 minutes and 30 seconds. We're going to get a link drop as well. Uh-oh. I wouldn't hate a Void Ray here, guys. After one Oracle, I would not hate a Void Ray. Come on, hero. Please keep your Oracle at home. Guys, if we want a close, fun, competitive ser uh, series... Do whatever the hell you can to send that Oracle home. Hero, what's happening? Short circuit. He's now on the other side of the map and he's going to see... Oh, wait, there are no drones here. Yeah, that makes sense because I saw you had 38 Zerglings four minutes into the game. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, it's a nightmare. Double link drop. Knight is in the main and I don't see a world where you defend this. But I hope that I'm wrong. We have some adapts. We have Oracles. But we're gonna have to deal with a lot of links. Maybe, guys. Maybe we can get a great fight with the probes. The queen count, I don't think, is crazy high yet. All right, we have some adapts there. We are going to battle. He's gonna go for one of the queens. And Cero hops the queen back into the Nidus network. And he hops it back out. But it was low HP. 17 workers have fallen. But obviously, Cero needs a little bit more than 17 workers. Because he is a two-base Zerg with absolutely nothing. And all the links on the other side. Those links did not manage to get in. So there's 22 probes that died, but Hero is actually okay. Believe it or not, Hero is okay because Serral lost those two queens. Those two queens were all the anti-air he had. 
and the extra links did not get in. I was incredibly worried when he flew that oracle to the other side of the map. But he is going to be okay. Sero is doing this of an ultra low drone count. 18. Those links could have actually gotten into the Nidus as well. Maybe a missed rally point or something. Or maybe he thought that the drop lord would survive. I don't know what happened there. But Sero could have had way more links streaming out of that Nidus. It did not happen. And that means, guys, that Hero is now kind of cooking. Up 10 workers. You've got Stargate tech against the Zerg, who's got a very, very little going his way. Don't forget that these two Oracles have a lot of potential. There are no Spore Crawlers. I honestly think this is kind of game over. And I think knowing Sero, he's not going to stay in this game forever. But he might just try another Nidus attempt. Who knows, right? There's always a chance. If you do it with four or five Queens, you have a chance. I know he made a few drones, but I almost have the feeling that this must be another Nidus attempt. You don't really macro your way out of this, being down 12 workers and being a two-base Zerg. Uh, we don't have a sport crawler here yet, guys. I mean, this is, these queens cannot win. Fort Ray is going to show up. Triple Oracle is going to say, hello, Sarah, how are we doing? First queen with all the energy dies. Second queen dies. And we have another Nidus attempt in the pocket expand, guys. But that will only ever be links. There will not be any queens. Well, I guess we can save queens with our Nidus. Cute save there. Okay. Sarah is going to get that Nidus up. Hero is going to create a bit of a wall up in his natural. But we got double battery there. Double battery is going to be absolutely fantastic for Hero. He's going to level work a lead. As long as these units of Hero don't get surrounded in the middle of nowhere. Batman Apollo says maybe Hydra all in. It's imp I think it's kind of impossible with the economy that he has. I mean, he might try, but... This would be an insane win. If Sero is somehow able to make something out of this game, after he could not kill him earlier, if the, not all the links made it out of the Nidus, maybe he just needed one more queen, Lord knows. But if you win from this spot, if I was here, I'd just call it a wrap. I'd be like, sorry guys, not feeling it today, it is over. Thank you for your contribution, Rit. Good riddance. <laughs> you guys saw what I did there? Fleet Beacon and a second Stargate with plus one air weapons. As Cero still has no Spore Crawlers. He does have more Queens at this point, And he's going to try to drop a Spore Crawler. Hero says, I want to take this fight against all the Queens. And loses two Oracles for a single Queen. That uh, wasn't quite it, Hero. Good news is, guys, that Hero can afford a mistake or two. Because he is Omega far ahead. But we don't want to do that all day, every day. Cena brought it to set five. That's crazy. Thank you to Asgard for the 10 months. I really appreciate it, mate. What happens if you kill the Nidus with units inside of it? So let's say, clever, uh, to make this clear. Sero puts a lot of units in his own Nidus and he does not have an exit somewhere. And then you kill the main Nidus structure, everything dies in it immediately. It has happened a few times in competitive StarCraft 2 history that a crazy amount of lurkers were stuck in a Nidus. Then you kill that Nidus and you can just lose like... 80 or 100 supply immediately. Mm. Well, Saro is uh, apparently just like Hero in a fighting spirit. But hey, that's nice, right? This is the grand finals. You guys don't like it if players leave very early. Uh, I honestly think there were moments in game one where Hero could have left. But he stuck in there and he actually made it a game for quite some time. Uh, I would not have blamed Sero at all if he left earlier when he was a two-base Zerg with zero queens and down in workers against Stargate Tech. If he would have left that moment, I would have had complete peace with it. I think all of you guys would have had, but it's also nice to see him try. I guess Sero is saying, I am Katowice 2023, never again. I'll make them certain that we won't have any discussions like that anymore. <laughs> Some of these Nidus scenarios, they can get a little bit hectic as well, where you see your links battle the probes, and obviously we see the amount of workers that Hero still has. But it's impossible for Serral to immediately know how many workers Hero has. And you see those fights, 
And yeah, what if there is a world where he dropped Hero all the way to like 10 probes, right? If he would then leave, we'd all be like, what the hell? No, why would you do that? So I think it was just one of these just in case scenarios. And Hero indeed has a tendency. <laughs> you know what? I The way that I will remember Hero in this tournament so far, guys, over the last three weeks is that Hero has been absolutely amazing in some games from the start. He's just on point. Or when he's in a little bit of trouble, he just hangs in there. The only hero that didn't look that pretty is the hero that's got a game locked up. When it's like, alright, GG, it's over. Hero has done it. At that point, it's almost like, are you sure? <laughs> you really think I've done it? Let me lose a prism. Let me lose 10 adapts. Let me lose two, what, two disruptors for absolutely no reason. And we're like, ah. Oh. But in most of the games where either nothing has happened or he had a, an, an even start or a rough start, he has looked amazing. This is one of these games where he is Omega far ahead. Let's hope that he is not going to drag this game on forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was this the map by Reyna 1 over Seros Protoss? Yes, that happened at Home Story Cup 24. Hero is AFK with his oracles. Good job there by Cero. Right clicking underneath these oracles to make sure that he gets the kill and he doesn't push them away from his own units. Mm. I uh, I am not totally certain, ECO. I am not totally certain. I would really like to see Hero go when he has plus two air weapons. It's like, all right, he did try that fight with the mass oracle right against the queens, and that didn't totally go his way. He killed one queen, lost two oracles. That maybe scared him a tiny bit. But I do really hope for everything that is good on Ire, that the moment plus two air weapons is 80% done, that we are moving out. Because I don't want to see a world where Serral gets Hive, gets Vipers, gets Spore Crawlers. Like, please don't let it get to that hero. But I see a War Prism on the production tab. Plus two is finishing up. And I believe that he is a plus two carrier believer. Also, it is very important that there is an uh, observer with this army. Uh, if, if you are cheering for Cero and you don't care about a close, fun, competitive finals. And you just want to see Cero win and dominate. You are hoping that Hero does not move out. You are hoping that Hero is gonna piss chill as Reyna calls it for another two minutes and just sits there at home and builds a little bit of everything and if he does that he is really gonna give Saro a chance and he's gonna get another robo and a robo bay has not started plus three air weapons yet that's also something you want to see if you're hoping for a trio lead for Saro Four Zealots in the pocket expand, and he's going to warp in a few more. That is going to temporarily deny this base from going up, I think. As long as the Zealots right-click on the hatchery, that should be a cancel, and it is a cancel. Very last second cancel. All right, Hive is done. Ultralisk Cavern on the way. As Hero is now making two Disruptors, and he's firing up plus three. Will he ever move out? We want the sweep. The supply is even. The armies are not even. Hero's army is a lot more powerful and a lot more high attack than Serral's army. So you do, you can look at the supply and be like, oh, this is an even game right now, right? No. It is absolutely not an even game yet. Hero, I think, is still in a very good position. But yeah, if he doesn't do anything in the next few minutes, Serral is going to close that gap every second that goes by. Hero is in a good position, that means that Hero is in a bad position. That is a tiny bit of the trend of this tournament, yes, but... I have no idea what we are waiting for, though. Alright, I believe there is move out. Please have observers. Please have a leftover oracle. Because one way that Hero can... Okay, has double oracle. One way that he could also lose is that all of his carriers get neuroparasited. 
Plus three air weapon, this is halfway down. There are five Ultra Lisk on the uh, production tab, by the way. And Ultras are incredibly tanky against carriers, especially once um, Kindness Plating is done. And Kindness Plating is this upgrade right here in the top left side of our production tab. Uh. Why is this a game? That is a great question. Let's hope it is not totally a game yet. As neutral spectators that just wants to see a close, fun, competitive series. Let oh my goodness. He's, he's afraid. He's not going to go for it. I mean, now Saro has infestors and ultras with kindness. It's unbelievable. Trigger is saying the Yona is going to win, man. This is wild. Yeah. We are now looking definitely at the best spot that Saro has been in. Maybe Hero's got like some nerves or something. Or he's got like too much respect almost for Saro. Where he's just like, in his mind, Saro is so good that he has an answer for a lot of the things that he can think of. And he is intimidated, and that's why he doesn't want to throw or something. Well, at minute 11, I said, if he doesn't do anything, then obviously it is just a matter of time before Saro is in a very playable spot. We are, I am feeling almost there. Saro's got money in the bank, he's got ultras, he's got a crazy amount of investors. Late game Protoss is still pretty good though. And I'm sure that Hero has a good late game control. And we can't ignore the fact that we got plus three carriers, guys. We have plus three carriers against a Saro that barely has any in the air. The Novas go forward, they will blow up a couple of swings. Plus three carriers are good. Corruptors are now on the way, and they are working on plus one uh, carapace. The Revelation has also revealed the investors. Like, I still like it for Hero right now, but please, man, like, let, let's get something going. <laughs> let's get something going. I like the Triple Observer. That's nice. I love the Oracles leading the charge, jumping at Revelation. Hero, we've got money in the bank, and we've got the biggest upgrade advantage that we are going to have in a very, very long time. This is absolutely where we want to dance. There's a War Prism for reinforcements as well. I like that, too. Saro breaks the game again with 201 supply as a Revelation has landed. Couple of Novas go forward, plus three carriers, guys, don't forget. Upgrades matter so incredibly much for carriers. The Corruptors that are coming out will melt. They will disappear. After 18, Miros, uh, 18 minutes, Hero finally had enough, and he says, it's my time, baby. It is my time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> We've got a good army, Hero. We got a really big upgrade lead. Please. I know you killed two hatcheries, but please. <laughs> Spread out those observers, fire some Novas, and let those carriers with the upgrade advantage do their thing. This is the biggest upgrade advantage that you are going to have. It's not going to get any bigger than this. And I understand the fear of those Zerg spellcasters, but the longer we wait, the more difficult it will get. It's going to push... The creep. Maybe we're just gonna clean up the creep a little bit. A 19 minute game, Orati said. After a filled Queen Ling Nidus. Viper's looking for an abduct. Plus two carapace on the way right now. It's obviously. Corruptors only have one upgrade advantage, or uh, one armor upgrade at the moment. That means that these carriers can still absolutely shred them. We've got some Immortals in the mix too. Hero is in a good spot with the War Prism there, I love it. Accidentally picks up his Archons. Not sure what that was about. Should be able to take out this gold. Saro knows it. Corrupt account is climbing though. Hero sends an Oracle forward, it gets uh, abducted, but at least he knows where this Zerg army is. He's gonna get another base and he says, all right. That means that I have temporarily dropped you to four bases. Are we going, guys? <laughs> Are we going? Should he stay or should he go? No, 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 no. Uh, my Proto's heart is bleeding a little. I still think that he can just get the job done here. As long as he doesn't take the worst fight ever against Spellcasters, he should absolutely get the job done. But if Saro can close that upgrade deficit, there are so many bases on this map. Is this the moment that we are finally going to battle? A couple of fungos have landed. He does land feedback. 
storms have landed. Quarriers are going to try to do their thing. Serral tries to do the local maneuver, but plus three carriers are great. They are almost out of interceptors, though, but Serral's also almost out of anti air. So <laughs> both players lose a lot. Some of these ultras survive, but most of the carriers have survived. Serral does immediately queue up 19 corruptors. Hero, you've got a monstrous bank mate. Please keep going. He needs to keep fighting, he needs to keep attacking. Those Interceptors will rebuild real quick. And that previous fight was against 1-1 one, one Corruptus. The next fight is gonna go versus 2-2 two, two Corruptus. Saro is remaxing on 8 Ultras, by the way. I guess he has 19 Corruptus too. 19-2-2 two, two Corruptus. Oh, man. Hero is now also remaxing. Has warped in a lot of Stalkers. Has a couple of Immortals in the mix. Serral knows about that base in the bottom right side, and he's going to do something about it. Ultras with very good upgrades at this point, plus three Carapace as well on those boys, and they're working on plus three melee. Mate, this many Stalkers, I mean, Stalkers have micro potential, they can obviously kite a little bit, but if they ever get fungal, then Lynx and Ultras get on top of them, and that is a very big fungal, and Serral's going to go for it. The storms are massive, though, on the Corruptors, but not too many carriers remain. Can the Immortals hold down the line? They did their job. They tanked for a little while. They got some shots off. We have one more Immortal showing up, and that Big Daddy's going to live up to the name. One or two of those Archons survived, and we've got some multitasking. We've got a bunch of Zealots getting on top of the gold. Hero is Omega Rich, so the fights don't need to be the prettiest of them all. If we can just keep on... Uh, resetting the army of Saros. Now those units do get surrounded by Zerglings. Corrupt account still pretty high. War Prison makes it into the pocket expense. Heroes down in supply, but obviously he's still up in bases, up in economy. That is a lot of Zealots though, as one of the carriers got jumped upon by those Corruptors. It is just Zealot galore at the moment, but yeah, Zerglings are very good against Zealot. Saros is now going to try to take out a Nexus with these Corruptors, or is just hunting for that carrier that got recalled. Heroes on 71 workers. Saros only at 54 drones. There is no battery. Well, there is a battery, but we didn't use it. I feel like we could have used the battery there. But we didn't use it. Stalkers are chasing. Stalkers are going to be able to gun down a lot of these corruptors here. Well, with a lot, I mean one. Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe three. No. He gets two Corruptors, loses a Nexus. Both players now somewhat broke. What a truly bizarre game here. Hero is going to make a Mothership. And one thing that Motherships are very useful at is recalling armies into spots. I hope there is detection here, by the way, guys, because there are still all those investors. There is an Observer coming in from the back. That is good. Viper is dealing a bit of damage to the hatch and the hero just says I want to take out that hatch because I know that you are starving for cash. So he's just going to right click on it and he's going to try to spam some storms. The brute lords have now shown up. First storm is going to clip most of those brutes. Hero is uh, nowhere near as rich as he once upon a time was guys. So we have to be a little bit cautious right now with our army. After warping in all those zealots. He does have a pretty good army, and we know that he is incredibly good with this army. It comes down to obviously making sure that we don't do something silly against the spellcasters. It's all of Sero, his plus three melee zerglings are going to get on top of that base in the bottom right side. That's going to make Hero a little upset, so he is just going to chase this zerg army down. There is not much on the ground for Sero. I mean, Brutlords are doing their thing, but the Stalkers have no respect for it at all. They're going to blink forward, but Fungal lands and Blinding Cloud lands as well. War Prism gets abducted. War Prism does not get killed. So Sero is now down to his initial three bases. And he's still counterattacking with the Lynx. That's a lot of cannons, though. We're going to go for a recall. I like that recall because this base is, I want to say important, but all the gold minerals are actually gone. But the bottom base is even more important. So Saro is a 3 base Zerg, does have the gold again, or at least he's trying. But yeah, Hero's gonna do whatever he can to deny it. <laughs> I don't know how we ended up in this 25 minute game, but here we are. The Brute Lord count is getting pretty damn high though. We have a couple of storms and they don't really connect with anything. 
Seems that Hero just wants to get the hatchery again. He's gonna click on it. Maybe split up your zealots if that's possible. That is not possible. Investors going pretty far forward. That one carrier, by the way, is not a carrier that we can forget about. I only see like three corruptors left over. And if those corruptors are gonna battle the mother ship, mother ships are tanky. Good job, a hero getting another base. We are casually getting treated to a 26 minute game between Hero and Silver here. A game that could have been absolutely over at minute 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whenever Hero really wanted. That did not happen. This is what we ended up with. I want to see how many... Um, uh, Sarah still has a pretty good... Oh, I say pretty good mineral income. 1600 is not that good. But it is good compared to the 800 that Hero is currently working with. I wonder how that's possible. 156 supply against 151. Is it going to be a 3 0 lead for Zero? Will it be Hero getting his first point on the board? Comes down to spell casting. Every single unit counts at this point as Zero is double expanding, by the way, trying to take the gold and obviously trying to take this base. As Hero just wants to warp in more item employees, more Archons. And what minute will it end, Ruddy? You want to play the prediction game? I'm going to say that this game ends at minute 28. 28 20. <laughs> 28 20 is what I'm going to go for. As a fungal does connect with a couple of these item employees, with the warpers, with the observer, with the oracle. I really hope that that is not all the detection for Hero. As the mothership is going to try to do its thing, this does not feel like a very good spot to fight. It's only a couple of stalkers that are going to blink forward. Blinding clouds land, fungals land. The mothership is going to try to cloak these units. But the mama ship gets abducted. And it is actually happening, guys. It is actually happening. Hero is now down to 112 supply. Doesn't have a great economy anymore. They never took any of those bases on the left side. And he's now down to this army that is... Well, okay, he's gonna go for Void Race. I mean, maybe we can randomly surprise Zero with some Voids as a Abduct could land here, maybe. Or Fungal or Neuro Parasite. A lot of things could happen. As an Immortal does fall, Immortal gets surrounded. But that last remaining carrier is ultra low on HP. <sighs> Darkon dies, Carrier dies. We have two Void Rays and we are getting Flux Veins, but... The income of Hero at the moment is 500 minerals a minute. It's amazing for Sarah when the streak stays alive. It is not good for the neutral spectators today. And it is not good if you're a Protoss fan. And if you're a Hero fan, you're just in pure pain. As 2823, by the way. I don't want to say that I am goaded, but... Kind of saw that one coming. <laughs> GG gets called. Sero wins an absolutely ridiculous game. Let's just go ahead and take a tiny look. Well, let's take a look once more when it actually ended. When did the GG call come? Oh. Okay, I was two seconds off. Now let's just go casually back. 24 minutes into this game. We had the link draw. We had the Nidus attack. Da 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 da. It's filled. At this point, Zero is a two-base Zerg with 18 drones against a two-base Protoss with 28 workers. And a little bit later, Zero makes another Nidus. Down nine workers, two base against two base, Stargate, Oracles, Fleet Beacon. Against Hatchery Tax Zerg, that supply block with Queens and Links. Fifty-one workers against a thirty-three. Oh, oh, oh. Pain. That is pure pain for Hero. That is pure pain for all the Hero fans. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break. I need that tiny break, guys, because this one definitely did hurt my Protoss heart a little bit. And we're gonna see if Hero can keep it together and can turn things around here in the Grand Finals of the Masters Coliseum. Sarah's taking a little break as well. I'll see you guys in like two or three minutes. 
I mean, it's an amazing comeback by Saro. He obviously did what we know that he's capable of, and that is play amazing late game. But no matter how good Saro is, that should not have happened. It is what it is. Tiny break. See you guys real soon. Oh my goodness, what is up with all this weird... I apologize about all this weird dubstep, guys. That is not supposed to uh, be in this playlist. This is not my playlist. This is one of the playlists that I can use when I don't have to delete the VOD. And I know a lot of people like to watch the VODs because these games are played at a very bad time in uh, America. But then every single time I have a normal song and I come back, it's like... I'll, uh, I'll put some effort into getting a, a normal playlist in the future. <laughs> One of the very first messages, guys, a little over two and a half hours ago when I went live, or, well, I've been live for three hours, so let's say two hours and 55 minutes ago, somebody said, Good morning, Roddy. How worried are you about a 5-0? I said, In all honesty, I am kind of worried about a 5-0, but Hero keeps on proving us wrong. He was amazing against Solar. He was great against Dark. He was absolutely fantastic against Raynor. So, I hope that I'm wrong. After this previous game, I am terrified of a 5-0. Because, yeah, what, what, do I, what do I say? What can I say that you guys are not thinking and haven't said yet in the chat? Hero kind of showed all his cards on his way to the final. Like, that is a reasonable point. You can obviously say that Saro had a crazy amount of games to look at and get ready. But StarCraft 2 is not that simple that it's like, oh, I have a build, and if my opponent knows about my build, then they have an answer. Like, it always comes down to execution, right? And this is why your top-tier players can have fun and they can beat up on lower-tier players if they want to on the ladder with funny builds. Because the builds, they matter to some degree, but the execution is so much more important. And uh, so far, Saro is obviously executing at a level that we know he's capable of. And Hero did not look bad in the first two games. If anything, Game 1, I was actually very impressed because I hated his start in Game 1. And he hung in there like a champ, made it a 19-minute game. He got five bases. So game one gave me some faith and gave me some confidence in Hero. But that previous game has wiped all of that away. You don't want to know, Benny. You do not want to know. What is the chance of a comeback if it's 4-0? <laughs> I don't know. There is one thing that I do know, and that is that it's incredibly difficult to predict hero games. If you think hero is dead, he plays the best StarCraft you've ever seen out of any pro roles, and he hang hangs in there like a legend, and he turns things around in ways that you didn't think was possible. If hero is ahead, he can have some decisions where you're just like, oh my goodness, what is happening? So, very tough to predict. I would be lying if I tell you guys that I am feeling a magical hero comeback right now, but... Let's not count the man out just yet. His run has been too amazing and too impressive so far up to this point to just count him out. But I have never played tennis, uh, Norton. I am thinking about it, and I do love watching tennis right now on TV. And since I think tennis is a bit more fun maybe to play 1v1 than Padel is, I was thinking of picking up a tennis record, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do that eventually. And also, my local tennis club has like five tennis courts and only two padel courts. So the padel courts are pretty much always busy, but there's a lot of open tennis courts all the time. So I, I do want to give it a shot. I want to try, but I don't know. Maybe I'm intimidated because I know that I'm very bad in tennis. <laughs> come to Munich and let's play some tennis. I cannot come to Munich to play tennis, mate. But maybe at a home Surrey cup in the summer. There is a tennis club in Krefeld, and a lot of people do want to play tennis, a lot of people want to play padel. So, I think this summer we can, uh, you should come to Krefeld, and then we can play. Mm. Uh, I agree with that data. And that was obviously already a bit of a throw, as everybody in, in the chat called it GG. Rainer called it GG, and chat was not wrong. But, like, that's just the thing, right? Sometimes people get upset over... It's like, oh, but people said it was over and it wasn't over. Well, it's kind of like the equivalent of sports where... If uh, Barcelona takes a 3-0 lead against Real Madrid and we are entering minute 79... Yeah, you think the game is over. If Madrid suddenly scores three, go uh, three goals in the last 10 minutes... 
be like, well, turns out it wasn't over. No, but it looked over. <laughs> and the previous game absolutely looked over. Top left side, up 3-0, two maps away from crowning himself as the Masters Coliseum 7 champ. The Finnish Phenom, who's now 13-0 in the playoffs. One of the most insane runs we've ever seen in a big online prestigious tournament. Basilisk Cero. Bottom right side, the man who took a couple minutes, he was away from the computer, his camera was disconnected. Uh, maybe splash some water in his face, I don't know. Hopefully he can keep it together and turn things around. It is Dragon Kaizi Gaming Zero. Makes a little frowny face there. Can't blame him for that. <laughs> Thank you to the one meter long King Kong Dong. Great username, mate. This is a best of nine. Not a best of five. If it was a best of five, it'd be over. If it was a best of seven, this would be championship point. Hey, a forge, by the way, guys. It is a forge. All right. A forge. Cool. We'll get some cannons. Zero his overlord. Is that gonna be deep enough? Do you guys think that he sees it there immediately? I'm not certain actually. That is going to be a close call. Show us Zero's vision, please. Show us Zero. Okay, now he knows, yeah. Right there he knows, and obviously it is a oh, there's a gap. Okay, this so far looks like a very weird cannon wash. But okay. Uh oh, there is a gap. No, there is a gap. It's gonna be fully surrounded. So, Hero goes for a crazy, bizarre cannon rush where he just says, I don't care how much surface area you have, I'm just gonna get so many cannons that they will come online and they're gonna kill your stuff. He did not cancel that cannon, so the first cannon dies, the second cannon has finished up and it's gonna die. It basically all comes down to one cannon right now that's obviously going to kill a decent amount of drones, but now this is also, I'm afraid. Well, we have one more cannon. Link on obviously is quite high. Five drones dying at the moment. And these links are going to have enough damage to kill this cannon too. So Hero has a five worker lead, six worker lead, but he has no Nexus. And he lost five cannons. I think Boanan, Turkey Dano and Print F will be ripping their eyeballs out. After seeing that one. I mean, I'm not a cannon expert, guys, but that it feels like we could have tried to reduce the surface area a tiny bit on one or two of those cannons, but... Uh. Um, yes, that is uh, correct. Toss good unit. I think you are correct. I think game four here will be played on US Central. They do not show us that information, but it would make sense to me. Well, hey, better news though, guys. Hero is behind. <laughs> and when Hero is behind, he plays fantastic. So, for everyone out there who wants to see a few more video games, <laughs> Hero does his absolute best work. I won't say from behind because then you guys get weird. But when he's in a bit of trouble. <laughs> in this tournament, he has shined brighter than the sun. When he has bad starts or he finds himself in an awkward spot. So, let's hope he can turn things around. Yeah, but I'm just playing ladder. I don't mind it if chat gets weird. But during the grand finals of Masters Coliseum, I try to keep it a little more fun. We have Boanan actually in the chat. <laughs> Boanan is, uh, for the people who are not familiar with Boanan, he's a Dutch cannon rusher. And he's damn good at it. Could be a little better in keeping his probes alive. I say that often and I'll stand by it. But he is incredibly good in placing the cannons, reducing surface area, uh, making them go up in gnarly spots. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that <laughs> that is not the cannon rush that he would have loved to see. We're talking about a high Grandmaster League player with basically cannons only. He's the worst XD, I dislike him. Bowenon is a nice dude. Don't hate the player, mate. Hate the game. It is not his fault. He's good with cannons. So Hero has a Stargate in the top right side, and he's banking up Oracles. Serral does not have a Spore Crawler yet. And the fact that he's waiting for double Oracle, I kind of like. Because I foresee some potential. 
Hero is down five workers, but he's about to change that. Will the queens move away? I think the bait here is that the queens move away to deal with the adepts. Here come the first two oracles of Hero. He grabs two drones in the start. How many queens do we have in the main? Sweet baby Jesus, there's so many queens. Hero ends up losing one of the oracles. He does get five drones in total, but yeah, losing an oracle is painful. Twilight Council and three more gates get warped in in the main. Uh, we had something going up over there. I guess that was a gateway for quicker warp-ins. That is going to get shut down. Now one thing we can absolutely say about this game though now guys. Is that the timings are very different right. This is uh, incredibly off. You don't practice a lot of games where you have all those drones battling the cannons. And then five drones die. And you know everything that you're used to. Uh, things that you normally practice. That's kind of out of the window. So it could be a bit of an awkward game for Saro to play, but Saro is just so freaking good in everything that I don't even know if the word awkward exists in his dictionary. As a couple of the adapts do uh, take a lot of damage, the Oracle is low on HP, but it will get saved. One more adapt does get picked off right before the recall kicks in. It is a lot of gates, but Saro has an 8 worker lead and he's already cranking out those roaches. And roaches are a very good answer against the depths with Resonating Glaive. And Robic Throne says this game is over. Yeah, but that's what we also said about the previous game. I would obviously be lying if I told you guys that I like Hero's position. I don't like it at all. I think he's in a world of trouble. Let's see if he can turn things around. Overseer is going to sneak into the natural hero a supply block too by the way guys and that's a big one 78 out of 78 pylons just got warped in nexus only halfway done Ugh. Well one way to get rid of a supply block is obviously by losing a bunch of your adepts <laughs> If your adepts show up and you see did no no what I mean okay it's a lot of adepts but that's so many roaches Maybe Hero just feels that he needs to get something done. And you know what? He is still going to get five, seven drones. Okay, it's a start. The economic damage is there. But it also means that he's going to lose the vast majority of these adapts. If not all of the adapts. Because don't forget, a recall is on cooldown. Coco's second recall is not a thing. So we have just lost, what was that? 12, 14 adapts, killed 10 drones. What is going to stop Sero from rallying everything to the other side of the map right now? Uh -huh. I uh, can't think of anything. And by the looks of it, Sarah can't really think of anything either. So he is here with a lot of his uh, roaches. And obviously the Zarklings are going to show up in the near future as well. Those are going to be the reinforcements. That cannon will not get cancelled. So that is a kill immediately. The first few probes are falling. The links are here. The roaches are here. 86 army supply against 14. Hero tilts his head. As he knows that this is a little too much Zerg to deal with. The cannons could not get it done here in game 4. And Cero takes a 4-0 lead after 9 minutes. 14-0 and zero in, the grand, in the playoffs of the Masters Coliseum. And things are looking incredibly grim for our Protoss Hero. Oh man, that looks rough, eh? I hate seeing that, guys. Because Hero has played such an amazing tournament. He looks sad. I hope he's okay. Mm -hmm. Looks uh, makes me a bit sad to look at it. Hopefully, he can start turning things around. Losing four games in a row is painful. Losing Ratu said is incredibly painful, especially in the way that it happened. Such a great run! I think no matter what happens here in that final and fifth game, if it is going to be the final and fifth game, Hero showed us that Protoss players are allowed to dream. He took out Max Pax in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. He took out Solar. He took out Dark. He took out Raynor. It is an absolutely magical, crazy good run. But yeah, obviously this hurts. He should still be incredibly proud of himself, no matter what happens. Gets rewarded with 9,100 dollarinos. That's pretty damn awesome. If he does not end up winning this finals. But obviously, we want to see him win a couple games.
at this point you can throw out all the cliches right that you forget about the score you just play one game at a time you just focus on El Sione it is going to be played on US West and you just try to do your best you take it one game at a time it is a pretty big pay difference between first place and second place First place is almost $17,000. Second place is $9,100. But hey, for an online tournament, still awesome. I think this is a good opportunity. Just in case it is the final game. I'm not hoping it is. But to give a big, big shout out to SC Boy and everybody from the WTL squad. For all the amazing things that they do for StarCraft. They run the WTL Code S. They run WTL Code A. They run the Kung Fu Cups on the Wednesdays. And they also give us Masters Coliseum. Our Chinese overlords have done a lot of good things for StarCraft in 2023 and hopefully will continue to do in 2024. They've been sick. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, round five, El Sioni. Here we go. This man is absolutely cooking. 4 0 for Basilis Cero. The bottom left side, the man who looks like he is hurting a little. Let's hope he can keep it together. And let's hope that he can at least turn it around and get a couple W's on the board. Dragon Kaisi Gaming's hero. A sick run. Great performance in the group stage as well. Started the tournament off with a 2-0 victory over Bunny. Beat Classic 2. Uh, overall heroes has been awesome. What did he... Uh play in the third round of the Swiss format again guys it's been a little while I know his opening match was bunny his second match was classic let's take a look oh he beat max packs in round three and then he played him immediately so back to back max packs <laughs> back to back victories over max packs okay uh, it's been an amazing run for hero has looked good in all three matchups. If you defeat Max Pax twice, you're obviously insanely good at what you do. If you beat Bunny, we all know what Bunny is capable of in TVP. And then all the Zergs that he defeated. The man can be proud. But I'm sure he doesn't really care about any of that right now. He just wants to get some stuff going for himself in the Grand Finals. Let's hope it's possible. Who do I think was the best player to face Sarah in the best of nine? I really think it was Raynor. Uh, and I know that you guys will say, but Raynor lost 4-0 in the upper bracket final. Yes, he did. But Raynor is incredibly fast. Raynor is inc incredibly talented and smart. And I think he can learn from those games so quick. And a lot of those games came down to like one big fight, one big push where a few drones into units could have made all the difference. And I think Raynor would have made it a competitive final. And I'm sure a lot of you guys would have favored this Serral that we are watching right now because he's just... He's looking so damn good. He's giving us some 2018 Serral vibes. But I, I think Raynor would have made it very close and very competitive. Shout out to Kills for the tier 1 subby. Really appreciate all of you guys tuning in over the last three weeks, guys. It's been... Uh, I mean, Clem didn't even make it into the playoffs. But obviously, if Clem was in the gr playoffs... Yeah, of course, Clem could also make for an amazing Grand Finals. But I was only thinking of people that were in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I was not thinking of somebody that did not make it into the top eight. But of course, uh, uh, Clem, at any day, has the skills to make Serral work incredibly hard for it. Yeah, Massive thank you to all of you who have stopped by my stream over the last three weeks. We stayed up till 5 or 6 a.m. before the tournament even started to cover a couple of these qualifiers. I really enjoyed watching the qualifiers to tell a bit of the story. See how certain players made it into the Swiss format. We were here for every single day and every single game. And you guys were pretty awesome to me. And I appreciate it. Hero is going to open up with 4 gate resonating glaive adept. Some of the protesters have found a lot of success with this opening. In this tournament, especially Solar really struggled with this opening. Uh, this is not Serral's first rodeo against this build. People have tried it time and time again. Uh, one slip up on the Zerg side is all it takes for this build to really shine. War Prism goes in the main, finds a few more drones, a big shade into the third. 
Nice job there by Hero as he snipes one of the creep tumors. That is a start. Buddy, do you know if somebody ever went perfect to score at the playoff stage of a Premier Tournament? Yeah, I mean, we've done this tournament, we've done this game for like 14 years. That has absolutely happened a few times. I don't have too many examples at the top of my head, but yeah, I'm sure that has happened multiple times. If you uh, run like 20, 30 tournaments a year and you do that for 14 years straight, definitely people have won playoffs without dropping a map. But a lot of playoffs will obviously have less games, right? Because the best of nine final is a bit extreme. Best of seven upper bracket is a bit extreme. The adapts are gonna work on uh, the hatch. Cero has uh, walled off with a spore crawl and the Eva chain, but this actually gives me a little deja vu of how Cero tried to deal with Zest back then at IM Katowice when the adapt printer became a thing for the very first time. Not bad though, gunning down these queens. Can Hero get another queen? He's so close. Please get that queen, Hero. Hero, please get that queen, mate. It's right there. I don't hate it, but we need a bit more. Hatchery is pretty low on HP. Might actually go somewhere, guys. Uh, roaches are in decent numbers, but that's even more adepts. Yeah, maybe a bit of War Prism Micro would be awesome. I think we could have picked up one or two of those low HP adepts. What are we going to go for Hero? Hero wants to now drop everything into the main, but I feel like that's not really the play. Now we leave four adepts by themselves and all of those adepts die. It was actually going kind of decent, but the last 20 seconds was a straight up disaster. I think if we just stay there and we battle the roaches and we warp in a few more adepts or we pick up some of the adepts, I feel like that was an okay-ish fight to take. Sarah is only on 37 drones though, and Hero is building Immortal, so... Not that bad. Double Immortal? I wouldn't even say this is bad at all. It almost felt like it could have been a tiny bit better there towards the tail end of that Adept attack, but... I don't hate this for Hero, guys. There's no reason to hate it. The Roaches don't have road speed yet. And Immortals with a War Prism should not die. Uh, not this is a bit unfortunate. Seems like Saru is going to get a cancel here. Unless the Immortals and Adepts can show up in time. But that's not going to happen. Is Hero now just going to send it? He does have a, sc uh, a scary and a strong army. A lot of these links have run through those Adepts in the center. Saru is going to build Ravages. Ravages are important. I think with very good War Prism Micro here. Hero can potentially do it. What are we going to do with this Adept Shade? Is he going to let anything finish up? Nope. Seems like he cancelled everything. He is going up to three bases again. But he's taking a nine o'clock base. If Immortals shoot at Roaches, you're loving life. If they're shooting at Queens and Ravages for too long, you like it a little bit less. The forward blink by Hero. And now it's really important that these Roaches do get targeted by the Immortals. But a couple of Zerklings are there to push the Immortals back at first. The forward shade felt a little bit adventurous, but a lot of queens are dying. The Immortals are still very healthy. Those Immortals are still so healthy. And now we can get some War Prism Micro going. And Cero has a lack of anti-air. The Adepts are doing their thing. Cero doing a good job in not taking crazy economic damage yet. Let's not slow down on the Immortals. I kind of want to see the Immortals battle here. Cero has very few units. Four Immortals, guys. Four Immortals as we had some leftover adapts in the natural in the main. Looks very good for Hero. Yeah, as long as he does not do anything too silly with the Immortals, with the War Prism, this game looks incredibly good. And we may have a series on our hands after all. Observer is gonna get revealed by the Spore Crawler though, that sucks. The Ravage account is high. There is one thing we cannot do and that is lose the War Prism. We cannot lose the War Prism. As long as that does not happen, I think Hero is doing perfectly fine over here. As the Queens are starting to run out of energy, one Queen will fall. Second Queen is going to take some damage. Five Immortals, though, doing their thing, living up to their name. Adepts are here to tank a little bit as well. They're very good in soaking up those Ravager shots. Zero does sneak a bunch of Zerklings in from the back, but the link count is not overwhelming. The Ravager count is actually pretty good. This is where we need some of that parting fancy war prism micro so far so good. Please don't lose the war prism. Oh my goodness. 
I cannot believe that he flew it back in range of all the Corrosive Balls. Saro holds. What a magnificent hold by Saro. I do still think that Hero is doing really good in this game because he's up 15 workers, but... Yeah, haven't we seen that before? Please don't lose your War Prism, mate. Whatever you do here, Hero, do not lose your War Prism. Double Robo Bay is the follow-up. You guys can see that maybe Hero is feeling a little bit flustered. Uh, Mortal Stake damage. Do come down a few roaches. Good job there. Obviously, he needs to cancel one of his Robo Bays, guys. Double Robo Bay is not the play. Where's the other one? Hard to cancel when they're that far away from each other, but... 12 Worker Lead. Robo, War Prism, Immortals. Um, maybe even... Does he have Blink? No, he, he does probably not have Blink yet. We are getting plus one. Back up, Robo. <laughs> Ah, uh, game looks very good for Hero still. What a hold though by Saro, guys. <laughs> that is actually such an impressive hold. Could not have timed those Zerklings showing up any better. And I'll be dead honest that my heart skipped like five beats. When Hero was going left, right, left, right, top, bottom with that War Prism. And five Ravagers fired at it. Minor panic attack, but okay. 12 worker lead, Robo Immortals. Disruptors plus two blink five oh <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean Yeah. You guys know, I think anybody that watches a lot of StarCraft knows that this game looks incredibly good for Hero. But after what we saw in some of those previous games, we also know that, that is not necessarily a guarantee for success. Please don't. Saro sending a couple of links to potentially get a cancel on the fourth base of Hero. He's going to see it. He's going to show up. Stalkers would have preferred some adapts there, to be completely honest. But I guess Stalkers are fat. And Stalkers reduce the surface area a little bit more. Saro really wants to get a cancel. Saro will get a cancel. All right, Hero. We've got Immortals. We've got Blink finishing up. We've got Plus 2. This is the army that you do. Your absolute best magic mid. I think it's time. Let's send it. Would Aspire not be good in this situation? I personally don't think Aspire is that good in this situation. Because Blink is done, plus two is almost done, and Saro has a crappy economy. Like, Spires are good if you're a little bit ahead economically, or if there is no good answer for it. But plus two Stalkers are a very good answer against Mudas, especially in the hands of Hero. Saro is going to chase his army back, but cannot get any of the key units yet. Four Immortals, four Disruptors, a bunch of Blinky Boys. And a war prism in the back. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong here, guys? Hero is going to get on top of the gold. And is going to now be able to force a fight on the edge of creep. Which is obviously a bit easier than for, uh, fighting on creep. Zero is going to try his luck again with the links. But I don't think he's going to kill that cannon, the battery. I really, really love this for Hero, guys. His bailing speed isn't even done yet. Plus two melee isn't even done yet. Disruptors are connecting. The links do not get a successful cancel on the fourth base. <laughs> I was in love with it for Hero. Now I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> we just need to tie the knot. Uh, he's actually playing it out very well here. For all the jokes and memes we've made, I think this is perfect play by Hero. Right on the edge of creep. Just getting some freebies with the Novas. Letting the Stalkers do their thing. And if Zero ever wants to fight Hero, then... He has to run into those Immortals, off creep, into the War Prism. 11 probes did die, by the way, and we are about to make that 24 probes. Oh my god, I called it. Never mind, it's 28 now, but it was 24 at first. Another sick call. <laughs> I'm impressed by myself, guys. But I think killing a couple of probes is not going to make the difference here. GG, the man can bleed. Hero with 4 gate, resonating glaive, adept, and an Immortal follow-up. Gets a point on the board. No clean sweeps in this final. It's not a 5 0. Hero looking really good there. Honestly, I like almost everything he did in that game. Uh, only move that was a bit questionable was when he had the 12 adepts at the third and then he wanted to go into the main and he kind of just let a bunch of them die. That wasn't the best play. Everything else, I think Hero played an excellent game. 
Reverse sweep believers. <laughs> Five four. A lot of things have to happen before I will believe in the reverse sweep, but I'm just very happy to see Hero win a game. Played such an amazing tournament. And he's such a great Starcraft 2 player, he does not deserve to get 5 0 here. And obviously, he should have already had a map win on the board. Put on your sweater. I don't have a Dragon Kaiser game, gaming sweater. And if you mean Basilisk, no. I'm a good luck charm to Basilisk. The boys have been very, very successful since they joined the team. Saro won ESL Summer in Yon Chopping. Rainer won a home story cup. Saro won a home story cup. Rainer won game is eight. They've, they've done pretty good. They have, we obviously had another big online tournament. I guess that was, uh, was it called Masters Coliseum as well? The one that I did at the same weekend as the stay at home story cup. Saro won that one too. Oceanborn, map 6. I actually think Oceanborn is a map that Hero plays very well. Because we, we know that Hero is a very chaotic player and we know he's very aggressive. But I think what he truly excels at is army movement. I think he's very confident in splitting up his army in two or even three pieces. Uh, I think Oceanborn is large enough and has a lot of different ways to attack your opponent. That Hero, if he can get a nice setup, if he doesn't fall too far behind, can really make some magic happen with stalkers, zealots, good upgrades, double or even triple forge. So. How big of a difference is the ping between US West and Central for EU Korean players? Obviously, I can't truly speak for Korea, as we can do quick intros, guys. Still championship point for this man. Still an amazing run. Basilisk Saro on the bottom right side. He gets a point on the board. Can we he make it too? Back to back victories, perhaps. Dragon Kaiser Gaming Hero on the bottom right side. So, I think Saro's thing is going to be a little bit higher than mine. Uh, on US Central, I get on average 115 to 120. So, I assume that Saro is going to get like 130 to 135. And on US West, I get anything between 175 and 180. Or 185 even, sometimes 190. But and I think Saro probably is around like 190, 200 on US West. I don't know too much about Korea to US West. I did play one or two games when I was in Korea on the American server, but that's a long time ago. I was way more excited when I was in Korea to play some games on the Korean server. Gemini is in Korea and he's telling you guys that for Korea it's 140 to West and 180 to Central. So. Yeah. And that's why I think the way they alternate the servers is super fair. Because there will be one more game where Hero has a better server than Saro. But whenever Saro has the better server, his advantage is a little bit bigger. So I think that's the perfect way to balance it out. It's just the most fair way to do it. And one day we'll have zero ping all around the planet, but we're not there yet. 100 MS is really not that bad in StarCraft. Uh, I never, I've never been too bad at playing on US Central and US East. They were completely fine to me. Playing from the Netherlands and US West, I do find very painful. And whenever I do my show matches against the Chinese casters, I have to play on US West. If I did some show matches against Pig in the past, I have to play on US West. Those games are painful, but Central is very fine. Guys, we have Chabot12 in the chat saying, My wife Kristen here just gave birth to our baby girl. She's sitting here with me. Can we give her some hype? Uh, that's awesome, mate. Congratulations. Uh, all the hype, all the love to you, to your wife, and to your new daughter. Let's go. Excellent. Fantastic. Hype, 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 hype. Happy for you, mate. Congratulations. Look at all the moms and dads in the chat getting hyped for you. <laughs> now my older audience reveals itself. It's like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> mm. 
All right, very standard opening here, guys, for hero. We've got a one gate, fast expand, couple of adepts, couple of oracles. We will keep a very close eye on how many oracles is it going to be. Hero does not shy away from five or even six oracles. Standard is, of course, triple oracle or double oracle. It's going to send out the probe at 3.30. And he will go for a very quick third base. Nothing to worry about as Sarah's circling speed isn't done yet. And his circling count isn't crazy high. Your son turned 60 yesterday, Ascalon. That's crazy, mate. Your son a gamer. Congrats to him and you as well. No birthdays over here in the Roddy household, guys. But I do think that this is going to be the summer of Roddy getting a puppy. I have a few trips coming up. I need to travel a few times. And obviously I don't want to travel if I get a puppy. But you know, July, August, October. No newborns, but a puppy. Dreams can come true. We'll do a little 24-hour stream, get pumped, <laughs> get all the best possible dog toys and beds and cushions and blankets out there. Make it happen. What breed? Akita, of course. Man. That is uh, not, not a question. I will never get a different dog than an Akita. At least not as my first. Maybe if I get older, I would eventually get something else, but it has been... I don't have too many dreams in life. I just kind of roll with it, have fun, try to make the best of it. But if I can say one thing that has always been a lifelong dream, it is getting an Akita. And it would be silly never to fulfill that dream. It's absent Triple Oracle. Hero showing respect to Sarah does not feel that this was the moment to go for it. Follow-up is going to be a bunch of gateways. We have a Zellal Charge on the way and plus one. Now, for quite a few games, guys, we saw Hero just warp in 12 Zellals, run to the other side of the map and win. And I was sitting here like that Reddit nerd. It's like, you're not supposed to just win games like that. But then we had a game against Dark, I believe it was, on Psy Delta, where obviously Dark was finally ready for it. And then Hero showed us that he has an immediate follow-up as the Triple Oracle are battling the Queens here. And Hero is incredibly good in realizing what fight to take and not to take with the Zealots. And if he feels that the Zerg is ready, he almost immediately splits them up in different groups. And then Sero has three things to worry about. First Zealot group, second Zealot group, and then maybe the Adepts and Oracles that can deal economic damage. And it is very difficult for a Zerg to have an answer for all of these things. But Sero is kind of the man who has an answer for everything that people throw at him. And let's see how it's going to play out. 70 drones is a lot of drones, by the way. Whew. That is a lot of drones. Hero should be banking up some zealots. I wonder how many we've got at the moment. And I expect the zealot march to be happening right now. Outside of the natural, guys. The observer hasn't shown us yet. But there go them zealots. And he's going to look for a good fight against either queens, roaches, or just get on top of a fourth hatchery. And then obviously keep an eye on the oracles. Here we go. This is not a fight you take. So Hero is immediately going to realize that that is not the fight you take. Unfortunately, Sarah has not taken that center base. Sarah has taken the top side. So these were these openings that I was always worried about. Right now, Sarah is splitting up his units a little bit. Hero is looking for an opportunity. But there really isn't any. He's getting eight more zealots, guys. If, if Sarah just keeps on building roaches here, Hero is obviously in an awful spot. Uh, that is just so many zealots. <laughs> they, if they get the wraparound though, that would be insane. Sarah has bailing speed on the way. Sarah really could have used a couple of bailings here, guys. If Sarah has like four bailings here, it's awesome. So Hero waited. He needs to make up his mind. I kind of thought maybe he could go for the hatchery, but he doesn't want to go for the hatchery. He wants to go for the fight. A very important moment here in the grand finals. As we do have a bailing finishing up there, but that's not the best connection at first. The choke point, though, made life hell for those zealots. But Hero does find 13 drones, does find a couple of queens, and he ain't done yet. I mean, this is good, but Hero obviously needs more than good. Because it's so many freaking zealots, <laughs> so many roaches. Comedy Gaming over here. In the end, a several defense loses 13 drones, some mining time, and a couple of queens. I would not hate one safety void right now from Hero. 
And I know that's weird coming from me because I think Void Rays suck. But at this point, he doesn't really have Blink yet. Uh, Blink is almost done. Maybe we don't need the Void. Maybe there's more Oracles is better. It's okay. I think with the Blink Stalkers, Hero can survive. Good job running those Zealots all the way to the bottom left side. Okay. We have a game. I think a game that Saro overall is pretty happy with. Saro obviously is his own worst critic. And he will probably look at that and felt that he could have dealt even better with that attack than he ended up doing. But it's still pretty damn good. Now 16 Banelings are morphing. And don't forget that Baneling speed is already done. The man from Basilisk is up 4-1 in this best of 9 grand finals. One map away from crowning himself to back-to-back -back Masters Coliseum champ. A couple months ago, I drove back and forth to Krefeld like six times and home. To cast two tournaments in one weekend. Back then it was Cero against all the Korean Terrans. Now it's Cero against Hero. One thing that has not changed is that Cero has looked very good in the Grand Finals. <laughs> We are now witnessing exactly what I mentioned earlier, where I do think that Hero is incredibly good in splitting up his army and yeah, trying to move different squads of Zealots and Stalkers around. And then slowly but steady, just expand like crazy and get sick upgrades. And where Sarah obviously found good success with the Brute Lords, I think it's hard to go Brute Lords on this map, because he's probably afraid of Hero outmaneuvering him. With this many stalkers guys and a battery overcharge and all these oracles that can activate Bolzer Beam. I don't hate this fight for Hero at all. Sarah is on top of the Nexus in the top right side. I don't know if he got anything done there. Cancel please. He does not cancel. So yeah, Sarah does get something done. Sarah kills the Nexus and kills 12 probes in the uh, triangle base too. The fight by Hero was excellent. It's just that not canceling the Nexus is painful. And then obviously the 12 probes kind of whatever but the man is now here with a lot of stalkers and a lot of oracles and we know that he can take some great fights in these situations Saros probably going to look eventually for a surround but very hard to surround this many stalkers and on top of that the oracle count is still pretty high as hero is going to blink back there's another bingling run by happening and that is another 10 or so workers falling so now 21 have gone down in total Hero is rebuilding them non-stop though, so he's still at 61. Stock account still pretty high, very little crit to work with for Saro. Yes, yeah, plus two armor is about to finish up for Hero, that's gonna make these units a bit more tanky. Do the oracles have any energy left? Doesn't really look like it, but so many stalkers. Do we have any batteries or cannons to blink to here? I do believe that is the case. Good defense this time around at the triangle. Great battery overcharge. I love that battery overcharge. And Sero does not love it. So he is forced to turn around immediately. But if you are that close to the Protoss and then you run away. The Stalkers will get a lot of freebies on the chase. Hero is battling here guys. Hero is absolutely battling. And do not count him out just yet. Because he's got a lot of gateway units. He's got oracles with a lot of energy at the moment. Hero is actually doing really good. And I know that Zero is trying to get some Ultras out and he's got Kindness Plating on the way, but it is not going to be that easy to get those units out. And honestly, I like this game a lot for Hero, even if he's down 20 supply. So little creep has done a very good job in rebuilding the workers that he lost. He's microing these stalkers like we know that he's capable of. He just knows what kind of fights to take and not take. zero has got wave after wave of Ling Bane Ling, but everything is getting stuck in them stasis trappies though. So another forward blink. First Ultra is on the way, but one Ultra will not have that much of an impact against this many Stalkers. Those Bailing hits are big, and now the Lings are going to try to get on top of it as 14 more probes have died. Zero, his counterattacks are relentless. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, now I'm worried for all these Stalkers, guys. The Stalkers suddenly get a little bit stuck as the unit on throws in the Stasis Trap. Wow. Zero with another magnificent hold. He does such a good job in still finding damage on the other side of the map, forcing some defensive warp ins, dealing economic damage, and keeping this hatchery alive. But for how much longer is this hatchery alive? The stalkers are in range. Even the oracles could go for it, honestly. Ultra count is climbing, though. 
One ultra I was not too worried about for hero. Four, five ultras. That is really scary. And earlier he was rebuilding the workers. At the moment he ain't rebuilding those workers. Zero is going to chase. We have Banelings chasing the Zealots. He's going to try to split the Zealots. Another great battery. Overcharge there. That's going to keep all these stalkers alive. Oracles are doing that thing. Regenerating energy. Nice splits on the Zealots. Losing all the Zealots is painful. Oh, the game looks so promising. So good for Hero for a split second. But Zero is just a magician. He will always stay alive. He will always find clever ways to buy some time for himself. And get more powerful units out. The counter attacks never stopped. The economic damage never stopped. And somehow he keeps his base alive. And now with four more ultras on the way. All these links with plus three melee. And adrenal glands. I'm afraid that it's over. Looked very promising for Hero for a split second. Even if he was down in supply. He was looking good. Upgrades were good. He was in the face of Yona. But Sarah found the APM and found the resources to never stop slowing Hero down on the other side of the map. And it was just a matter of time before it wasn't just Lynx and Banes anymore. It was also Ultra. So Lynx coming in from the right side. Ultra set on the chase. A couple of months ago, Sero won the Masters Coliseum 6. And here in January 2024, after three epic weeks of StarCraft 2. With great qualifiers and even better group stage and a fantastic playoffs, Zero will be your back-to-back -back Master Coliseum champ. As he takes out the man who took out all the other Zergies, 5-1 to one in the Grand Finals. Zero hits you guys with the double thumbs up. GG, Goat. GG. The GOAT does it again, looks borderline untouchable in the entire playoffs. A 3-0, a 3-0, a 4-0, and a 5-1. Stunning performance in the playoffs of the Masters Coliseum. And Sarah is letting all of you guys know, just in case, if you doubted him entering IM Katowice, that he's still here, and that the GOAT absolutely still got it, baby. GG's, guys. And G G. I don't know if they plan on doing an interview and I'm also sure that I think Harstam is planning an interview and I don't like the idea of everybody tripping over each other for interviews uh, I'm sure that Saro will take his time if we want some interviews he's always very nice in that regard I think first priority obviously is WTL they haven't done any interviews but I'm just gonna lean back for a split second and see if they want to do an interview and if they don't, then I'll see if Harston does an interview. And I don't want to, like, beat Harston to it. Uh, it's okay. I'm a patient individual. 81% of y'all believed that Cero uh, was going to get the job done here in the Grand Finals, best of nine. And he did. The great Yona Sutala ends another big online win to his incredibly impressive resume. And that should do it. Let me take a look at Harsim's stream, guys, and see. Whenever he got into these actual games with the... I don't know if uh, the captain is going to do an interview or not. I don't know if anybody had Harsim's stream open. Did he say anything about an interview? Because if he wants to do it, I'll gladly let him do it. I think it is nice for you guys not to see me do it because I've done so many interviews with Sarah already. Uh, I think it's nice to maybe hear uh, Harsim ask a couple of questions. And I also think... Kev is a very smart guy, and he will do a great job. If he wants to do it, then uh, he can do it. Official stream does the interview. Uh -huh. Well, then I'm going to stick around for a little bit, guys, and I'm going to uh, watch that interview. So he's also going to do it after the official interview. So we have interviews upon interviews upon interviews. Sick. Anybody else wants an interview? There's also Lambo. Did Lambo also stream the games today? I did not know. Yeah, I'm okay with uh, those boys doing the interview for today. I think it's nice for you guys to get a different angle. I have done 30, 40 interviews with Sarah at this point. I think it will be nice if somebody else does it. Thank you to Dak Kraptakler, but I would like to take a little look at the official stream. If these guys are going to do an interview, I want to take a little look at that. Roddy, you're a legend. Thanks, mate. I, uh, I've really done my best, guys, over the last few weeks. And I know that a lot of people out there seem to think that I'm just a machine or 
Yes, we're dead, but it's honestly pretty taxing. Especially staying up very late and also having a lot of other obligations that I have to do in the evening and then still always going live in the morning. But I've done my best. It was awesome. Viewer-wise, it was absolutely fantastic. So I'm very happy in that regard. And obviously, a lot of you guys said very kind things to me as well, which goes a long way. I'm new to your stream and you're my favorite caster now. That's sweet, mate. Thank you. All right, they're going to take a little look at the bracket. I will just wait. Uh, I'll take a very tiny break for myself. I'll be right back. And I expect an interview with Sarah to come up on the mainstream real soon. I'll see you guys soon. Tiny break. <laughs> Nothing has changed yet. On the stream. Yeah, SE Boy is amazing. Those guys. Uh, I mean, I give them a big shout out. I think I said everything that I could say about them. Yeah. yeah, it was an amazing way to get ready for I am Katowice, I think. Soccer is really fun right now, man. And I know some people are trying to spread negativity and say that it's not that fun and whine about XYZ, but I think StarCraft is incredibly fun to watch at the moment. I think the game is in a really good place. And of course, it could always be better, and Cyclones are annoying, but I think the game is awesome. And I think I am is going to be sick. Sick! Not sure about the the promise that you guys made about an interview on this stream. But let's see. I'll give it a few more minutes. <laughs> no, we could use a Protoss win just once in a while. Absolutely, mate. I agree with that. That would be awesome. But that doesn't mean that the game is not great. And Hero is showing us that he is capable of beating Solar, Max Pax, Dark, Raynor, Bunny classic he's got the skills and obviously i think this finals could have gone a bit different i think we can all agree on that rati said is a game that none of you will forget and it's a game that i won't forget either <laughs> learning moments we can call them yeah i'm gonna go ahead and watch uh, final soon that's the, the only positive of a 5 to 1 finish. I obviously don't like a 5 to 1. I wish that it was like 5 3 or 5 4 even. But I guess it being 5 1 means that I can watch Feyenoord. That's pretty nice too. And we're gonna dominate, baby. <laughs> yeah, la la. I posted a really cool video of uh, the Feyenoord Stadium in my Discord. And if you guys are not in Discord yet, you can obviously always join. Exclamation mark Discord. It was an awesome clip of a couple days ago. That's the way that I love to see the Final fans. Sometimes I'm almost embarrassed of being a Final fan, but that clip made me very happy. Mm -hmm. Are you still working with ESL and go to the studio for casting? There is not really a studio that uh, you can cast from. I would not say that I'm working for ESL. I'm working here. Twitch is my full-time job, and I do get uh, a lot of support from Basilisk. Basilisk is absolutely fantastic to me. ESL just invites me to the tournaments that happen once every couple months. So, then I'm there, and that's awesome. But other than those big events like IEM Katowice or the ESL Winter Championship, I don't directly work for ESL. I don't get paid by ESL. You only ever get paid if you do uh, a weekend event like that, so just contractor basis. Interview started? Where? On Harstam's channel? Yeah, I have he, never seen he, he can prepare. He has, a long time, he, have a, he has a long time to prepare. I think he's, uh, he's, he's good at that. He's one of the guys that I look at when it comes to build order. Where is the interview then? Where do you guys see the interview? I am watching the stream. There's nothing. Oh, now it is. All right. Yeah, I, I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting, guys. <laughs> I mean, they're still blasting music, mate. <laughs> what are they doing? What? They are... They're blasting music. No, it was... 
was too scared of a pattern because I was planning to All right. take my Finally they stopped the music. The Thank the Lord. So I just wanted to have some basically suit over uh, Oracle VC on there and uh, that's just my normal normal OV spot and it happened to see the gate so I was kind of thinking here I might do something like that but uh, I did see it accidentally I think enough with the music guys stop the music just let us hear the voices uh, yeah, I couldn't hear anything either. <laughs> I am not in charge of the music, guys. They are. Look. The music is not from me, it's from them. Now, the second question is that the map of Red House Station. Uh, at the beginning, you went really super aggressive, but uh, it didn't work out. Then you got a little bit, uh, you know, back on, uh, you got it back uh, later on your uh, macro play. How did the mind work? Well, yeah, the start wasn't great. Um, I think I messed up my build. Well, not my build. That was actually, I saw Scarlet do it, so I copied it from her. But uh, yeah, I accidentally make a tumor with my, when I did the Nidus, I made a tumor. So I didn't have two transfuses, which was a little bit of a mistake. I'm not sure if that would work otherwise. But uh, yeah, after that, I didn't like my spot too much, but uh, I just stayed in it, tried to make some magic happen with the investors, and uh, I think he just gave me too much time. He should have just tried to kill me a bit faster, but uh, yeah, that was a little bit his mistake to lose that one for sure. Uh, is uh, Chess 你觉得他哪里打得比较好，或者说你那盘输掉是失误在什么地方？ Uh, so there's one round we lost to uh, uh, heroes, uh, uh, one wave rush. So how do you think? What is his advantage to get to win that map? Hmm. Yeah, that was an interesting game. I thought I held it pretty well at start. I killed a lot of adepts, but uh, his immortal follow-up was really strong. And uh, I just barely didn't have enough there, so it, it's hard to say. I think I just needed to macro a little bit better, or just get get a little bit more units there somehow. But uh, in general, I think numbers-wise, I played it pretty well. Uh, I didn't overthrow or anything, but uh, he had a really strong push there for sure. Uh, 当然我觉得他能打下来确实是有这个他做了什么调整？还有在整个赛事里面，他后期的防守水平是明显要高于其他的选手的。呃，我们想问一下，他认为他后期做的哪些比其他的选手要做得更好？ Okay, so uh, let's talk about something about the the switch round. Uh, when you got the zero to two loss to Maru, uh, okay, uh, it was uh, it, it was bad for you. But what did you do to come back all the way back to your throne? Uh, your defense is really uh, better than, you know, early in the game. Um, 
Well, I wasn't too worried after this loss against Maru, just because I felt like I messed up a little bit in the early stages of the games, and he got himself in good positions and then just managed to kind of finish me after a while. Uh, but I knew if I was just gonna do be better in the early stages of the games and not get too far behind, I, I should be completely fine. So I, I personally wasn't too worried, but uh, yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate to lose in the Swiss rounds for sure. Uh虽然说我有零比二落败，但其实我不是特别的担心，因为当时其实还算比较早期。我当时也知道，就是如果这里输了，干脆就输了，因为没有太大的关系。我后面呃打好我自己的就行，只要我前期没有太大的落后，
Do you wanna uh, do a tiny chat with me? The nerds would be happy. I will uh, do my best, guys, to uh, see if he wants to have a couple of words. Because obviously that that interview was not ultra satisfying with the music. Um, so what I will do is ask if he wants to take a couple minutes to talk to me. And if he does want to do that, then obviously I will reach out. And if you guys have any questions uh, in regards to the tournament, we can do that. Uh, he says, okay, so that's awesome. I uh, want to do want to do it immediately or want to take a few minutes oh it's fine by me whatever the champ wants because Harstam apparently went offline so I have to do it <laughs> wait with the questions guys because by the time that I finally get to talk to Sarah I have to do a tiny intro and then your questions are already gone so wait until I'm live and then we can do it <laughs> 